In this presentation, we are going to look at how to set up the Modbus IoT communication driver for open automation software. This driver can communicate to both Modbus masters and Modbus slave devices. If you visit our website, openautomationsoftware.com, and select Support, Knowledge Base, then on the left select Data Sources and then Modbus, you will see the tutorial we are going to follow along with, Getting Started Modbus. In this first step, I'll open up the Configure OAS application. Then I'll select Configure Drivers from the top menu to first set up the physical interface to the Modbus device. First, I select my network node. I will choose localhost, but this could be anywhere on your network or even on a remote location. First, I will enter a driver interface name. I will just call this my Modbus Sim, as I'm going to connect it to a Modbus simulator I am running locally. You can call yours whatever you'd like. The driver type defaults to Modbus, but you can see that there are other options as well. They include Allen Bradley, Siemens, and OPC, to mention just a few. For Modbus to communicate to other devices, you would leave the type dropdown set to master. If you want OAS to be a Modbus slave, you can set the type to slave, and then you host data to a Modbus master. Ethernet type can be set to RTU, ASCII, or TCP. For Ethernet, the default would be Modbus TCP, but you can choose any of the protocols listed. When communicating via Ethernet, we need to specify the IP address of the Modbus device we want to communicate to. In this example, I'm going to use a simulator that I have running on my system, so I will use the IP address 127.0.0.1. The last parameter on this screen is return to online. If the device goes offline and we are not able to connect to it, this is the frequency at which the OAS service will try to reconnect. The default is 60 seconds, but that can be adjusted to be faster or slower. Now that we have all of the information filled out, we select Add Driver. There is no limit to the number of devices you can have in OAS. We have customers that communicate with over 750 devices from a single Windows server. Step 7 in the article discusses how to configure tags. Tags are used to receive and also write the live value from and to the Modbus device. They are unique identifiers. I'll select Configure Tags from the top menu. I prefer to create groups to organize my tags. You can also nest groups if you'd like. I will call my group Modbus Group, but you can use any name you choose to. Then I will select that group and click Add Tag to add a tag to that group. I will call this tag My Tag. Here we can specify the data type of the tag value. This is going to convert the value we receive from Modbus to a known type. If you don't know what it is, you could use object. That would handle anything. In this example, I'm going to use a short integer, which would be a 16-bit integer. Next, I set the data source to be Modbus. You can see that it has auto-selected the driver interface I just created, my Modbus SIM. If you've defined multiple driver interfaces, you then use this to select which driver interface you want. The device address defaults to 1. That is what you can use for Ethernet unless you specifically know the device address on your network that you need to change it to. The memory type for Modbus can be one of these four types. Holding register is the most common. You can use coil status and input status for bits and holding register and input register for numbers and strings. Here we select the address. It depends upon the memory type that you've selected as to what is added to that address. The default is an address of 40,001. The holding register base is 40,000. Then an address of 1 makes it 40,001 in the Modbus device. You can also use extended addressing with the Modbus communication driver. The default for holding register range is from 40,000 to 49,999. Step 14 of the article shows some typical examples of both base addressing and extended addressing. If you wanted to access holding register 410,001, you would simply enter 10,001 in the address field. In this way, you can access the extended addressing up to 465,535. 
Here, we can specify the Modbus data type. It faults to a 16-bit integer. You can also use unsigned integers of 16, 32, and 64 bits. You can use 32-bit or 64-bit floats. If you use a float 64, that would span four words from a Modbus device. You can also specify it as a string. If I apply the changes, we will begin communicating with the simulator. Let's just bring that into view. If I write a value, I'll use 123. We can see it appear in the simulator. Conversely, if I change the value in the simulator, we can see that it changes in the tag property window. Currently, I am communicating to the simulator at a frequency of one second. This is set with the polling rate. You can change the value to speed that up or slow it down. You can add a gain or an offset to any of the tags. Let's say we have a Modbus integer value and we want to divide it by 100. We could accomplish this by changing the data type to double float and entering 0 0.01 in the gain field. This way, whatever value we have coming in is divided by 100. Also, when we write back, if we were to write a value of 0.5, then it also does the appropriate math going back the other way. Setting the offset adds to the value coming in and subtracts when it writes back. Let's speed things up a bit and show some data route functionality. I'm going to set the polling rate now to 10 milliseconds, and we can view the packets going in and out of the simulator. Next, I will take another data source, this ramp tag, and I'm going to change the simulation rate of that also to 10 milliseconds. Then I will go to the target tab, and I will check here to enable write to target. I will then browse to the my tag tag that I created under the Modbus group group and select it. When I apply those changes, we can now see in the simulator that we are writing to that holding register 40,001 at a 10 millisecond rate. This is very common functionality to write from one type of controller or protocol, possibly from an OPC server or an Allen Bradley controller to a Modbus device, or the other way around from Modbus to a different set of protocols. You don't need to use the target function in order to write to a Modbus device. If you have a .NET application or a web interface or any type of client application and it writes to this tag, it will then continue to write down to the Modbus device. You can manage your tags in multiple ways. One of the easiest is the CSV export and then use Microsoft Excel to configure the tags. You can use the Excel tools to copy, place, sort, search, and replace as you'd like. You can even do this by group, by right-clicking on a particular tag group and clicking Export to CSV. In the export process, you can select which parameters you want to export. Perhaps you only want to select the value properties. You would then just uncheck the boxes accordingly and click Continue. Save it to a file and then open it with Excel. After you have configured the tags to your liking in Excel, you would then import them back in. Be sure to close Excel before doing the import because Excel locks the file when it is in use. Another way to set up your tags is programmatically, either with our .NET component, which is a cross-platform component that can be run on Linux as well as Windows. We also have a REST interface that you can programmatically call. Calling the CSV import from the REST interface or the .NET interface is a very efficient way of configuring tags. You are now ready to use this data. Perhaps you want to log the data using our Data Historian product or set up some of the alarm limits under high, 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 low, maybe a digital alarm to use with our web alarm or .NET alarm products. Or maybe you want to use the data for trending or build your own HMI. All of these are possibilities with the Modbus data inside the OAS service. One of the final steps is to save your tag configuration. When you save your tag file, it saves both the driver interface configuration that you have created as well as the tag configuration. They will both be saved in this common file. Then, if you go to Configure Options and select the local service, you can specify the default tag configuration to load when the system restarts. This is important so that the service will run unattended if your operating system restarts. If you have any further questions about using the Modbus communication driver, 
Visit our website at openautomationsoftware.com and select Contact Us. Either send us an email at support at openautomationsoftware.com or call us on our toll-free number, or you can fill in the form right here on the page. For more information on open automation software, please visit our website at www.openautomationsoftware.com.